Okay, I see Emily. Olga, Kshika. Jumps. <laughs> oh, where'd you go? Did you? Where'd you go, Shim Florum Newsom? There you are. Okay. I think that's everybody. David's bringing over every noisy toy to the table. Okay, fishing tools. Used to stop pulling from going upstream, built like a fence. Is it team the triangle or team the diamond? Team. She grow up is taking the lead. When bait is dragged through the water to attract horn. Adam horn is the triangle and um horn is the diamond. <laughs> um horn. So that yum, is uh, yum. trolling. Yum, yum, yum. Yum, yum, yum. Oh, she'll go up still in the lead. A basket trap lowered in the river. Is it moch, which is the triangle, or moch, which is the diamond? Forty-five seconds. <laughs> Oh, oh tall dash geek is on fire. Takes a great deal of still to catch on with this. That's supposed to be skill, sorry. Uh Gaishkam Horn is the triangle. Uh, Shilam Emma is the diamond. I always have one spelling error per game. 40 seconds. Gaishkam Horn. Spear or harpoon. Oh, she go up's on fire now. And Gigi has moved up on the board. Circular trap used in the ocean. Traps pawn as the tide falls. So Zubbin is the triangle. Uh, Tish is the diamond. Tish. Should go up still on fire. Method used on the beach could be used on banks of Skeena River. The at is the triangle, steady is the diamond. Fifty seconds. The at and seven. Should go up still on fire. Fire. 
like jump. Used to catch a large like number of fawn at one time. Like Let falling jump. tide trap fawn behind lot of walls. <laughs> so match is the triangle and loop is the diamond. Forty five seconds. It's in loop. And seven. Oops. <laughs> Special type of net which traps fawn by their gills. The net hangs in the water like a curtain. Banna is the triangle. Adam Horn is the diamond. And seven. Adam Horn. She boat still on fire. Watch out. <laughs> Good Watch job. Watch out. Another use for steady nets was this, used on its own to scoop pond from creek or river. Banna is the triangle, ban is the diamond. 50 seconds. Forty seconds. Banna. Oh, Shagops on a nine answer streak. Am subbing. Okay, here's a puzzle. You're gonna put the pieces together, starting with the barb or making an um horn. So you're gonna put them in order. So which, which one would be at the bottom in the water, starting with the barb? It's a bonus question. So you're going to put them in order, starting with the barb. 25 seconds. Fifteen seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Da. Ah. Oh, most. So the order, starting with the barb, is barb, then the shank, then the lure, and then the leader. Those are the pieces to uh, uh, um on and we'll go over that. <laughs> and seven. Here comes the podium. Toga Shkiga got the bronze. Uh, Tadjumps got the silver, and she got the gold. Yay! Oh, yay! Yay! <laughs> Woo okay. Now let's talk about it. Okay. 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 Over this one. Okay, we're gonna start with Um Horn. Does anyone know what Um Horn in Kumshiwamak is? Come in. Say it again. Come in. Sorry, say it one more time. Home horn? Yeah. It's um 
Oh, I thought you said horn. I was saying fish, salmon. <laughs> <laughs> um horn. I didn't hear. I didn't hear the um horn. <laughs> um horn. That's uh, that um, a hell of it. Let's go. It's the fishing itself. Let's go. It's the fishing technique. Let's go. Yeah. Let's go. Let's go. So this was part of the bonus question where you have the barb that's made out of bone sometimes copper or iron, and then it's attached to the shank, which is a wood, sometimes ivory was available, or a stone. Um, in uh, Gumshi Wamak, this is trolling. Oh, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. I was like, I know it's the method, it's not using a net. <laughs> yeah. And then um, I think, um, the shank sometimes would be used with um, spruce root. And then have, uh, connecting to that is the uh, where the lure would be. And sometimes uh, fishermen prefer the abalone shell because they're kind of shining the crackfish at the same time. And it serves like laurels that are used And then after that would be the um, fishing line. If you're working, um, I think they use steady too. Um, see if I miss anything it's done in the ocean in the rivers um after they enter the river the horn don't eat so the bait does not attract them so the hook had two parts the body the shape shape of the wood and sometimes ivory bone or stone um horn is that like snagging I don't know if it's like snagging because our our hooks <laughs> four hooks are like this yeah and no bait on it and you just throw them and drag them and so. i think it may be the same yeah i think that snagging could be um i just know with the halibut hook that it's designed to be sucked into the halibut's gills mm -hmm. and i don't know about those those ones though yeah. I, was, I was giggling to Theo because snagging is also a term for hooking up <laughs> I know. <laughs> Is that like snagging? <laughs> I've been around lots of native people who snag. <laughs> I'm giggling around over here. Maybe. <laughs> so we, when we did salmon species, I used this book, the uh, Shoes from Hawaiian. And I didn't know that I had possessed this, but it's the Phil Jim Hohen Teacher's Resource Guide. That's where I found all these um, uh, nets and ways of fishing. So I thought it'd be cool to add to you our- You didn't know if you snagged it? You didn't know you snagged it? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know I had this book. I should look on my shelf more often. Um, okay. The next one is Gaishkam Horn, Gofil Aksidu in Gumshiwama. It's a spear. Mm -hmm. Spear, harpoon. Um, used uh, to catch fish in special circumstances, and you have to have a lot of skill to use this. Like, you need to be on Castaway, as Tom Hanks, <laughs> to use this. Um, Hoan had to be near the surface and visible so the fisher can take aim. The shaft was made from cedar so it would um, be light. Um, you can see in the picture the barbs um, pointed inward on the spear. Um, they use bones for the points and uh, sometimes antlers were attached for the barbs as well. Um, the difference between the harpoon and the spear is the way that the points are attached to the shaft. So that's Geishkam Horn. Ga'at. Uh, what is Ga'at in Gumshiwama? Any guesses? Beach thing. Yay! Beach thing and southern. Um, I know this is done in um, Krasilov uh, here still today. Um, 
a little different technique. Um, fishing used as an open beach, on the open beach when large numbers of fawn are gathered together. Usually this would be near the mouth of the river where the fawn waited until they were ready to go upriver. The seine net is uh, a net which surrounds a group of fish with a beach seine. The net pulled on shore dragging the fish onto dry land. Um, Week I, did you want to say how you guys do beach seine today? Oh, yeah. We usually go down <clears throat> Kasila and we set our stakes in, which are large metal with a, an eye on it where the rope goes through. And then we set them up where at, like a triangle. You get one on this end, one on this end, on the dry beach upland where you're going to do the pulling. And then at low tide, you run a stake down right in the middle at low tide. And then you're gonna run your rope down through that with a, there's a pulley on there. The pulley on, uh, well, on all three of them that the rope goes through the pulley. And then um, the rope is open. We put what we call a dummy line where you tie a dummy line where like this, you got a dummy line going across. When you're ready to set up for fishing, you take the dummy line off and then you actually hook your beach seine and start pulling so that the net goes out, out into the water. And you set it up uh, at the beach level and then put it and tie it on the other end of where that dummy line was. And then as the water tide starts coming up, you're going to pull so the net is pulled out deeper into the water. And then you have a buoy on the end of that net, a big buoy tied, and it just sits there. But as soon as that tide changes, when it starts coming in, that's when you see the fish starting to hit the net because their fins, everything are moving around. When that buoy starts sinking, you know you've got a good load in there. And I've seen it only once where we had over 30 fish in that. But nowadays, you know, with so many people doing the beach seining, it's, you, you're lucky if you can get 10 fish in there at a time per tide. But uh, when we see it hitting, when the fish start, we, we pull in, take the fish out and set it back out again so that we get and start cleaning fish. That's my job is the cleaning and filleting but the guys do the pulling in and that's why we have our four wheeler down there. You get older, you can't really pull, your back goes out. <laughs> so we use the four wheeler to pull in, uh, pulling in the net. And then we reset it up again for the next tide, uh, next low tide, we set it up again and wait for the next high tide. So it's kind of nice because you get to sit on the beach and watch the fish hitting. Uh, you're not, holding or dip netting down there, you know, with a dip net. So, and it's a lot easier. And we found that we like that more than dip netting. So we quit the dip netting and do the beach scene. Okay, any questions? Oh. Where is, uh, is it Kasilik? Kasilok. Kasilok. Kasilok is where we go. You can go to Kenai uh, area on the other side, uh, but Kasilok's the main place where all the beach scenes are hooked up in. Uh, down on Kenai area. Is that like a drive from Anchorage? Can you drive there? Do you oh yeah, it's a uh, two and a half to three hour drive from Anchorage. Oh. You'll go through uh, Sterling, you'll go through Soldatna, and then you'll see the road kind of Y off, off to Kenai and then towards Kasilov, and then you'll turn down towards the beach and we camp down there. We do a lot of camping down there. So cool. And, Ride the four wheeler while you're waiting for the tide to, you know, the fish go in. We just go for a ride. And someone, though, always has to stay with your net, whose ever name is on the buoy, because you got to put your name on that buoy. Fish and game comes down and they check them. So we always keep a bayou by the fish, because <laughs> ours has bayou on it. <laughs> oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Okay, the next one is Adam Horn. Does anyone know what Adam Horn is? Go 
comes you in. I know that at is net, so Adam Holland is, is that just fishing net? A certain kind of net. It's a net. A net? <laughs> <laughs> like Marcella, yep. a net? <laughs> like the island that we come from? <laughs> Gill net? Gill net, yeah. Um, when I was reading this, I didn't know the name of Gill net was because the fish were caught in the gills. I had no clue about that. I just learned that at 40 years old. <laughs> yeah, I learned that when we went, we went out ulican fishing on the skina here with a, with a gill net. Mm -hmm. And um, when they shake the net, I felt uh, we were shaking the net and it looked just like um, the chef on uh, the Muppets <laughs> and when the fish are flopping around you know and I was just laughing and my father-in-law was like what's so funny but I'd never seen, <laughs> never seen it before <laughs> same thing I felt like oh my gosh I can't believe I'm just learning that's why they call it a gillnet yeah no clear <laughs> um so a gillnet is a special type of net which traps one by the gills like I just said and then it hangs in the water like a curtain um traditionally made with cedar rope Wood floats, stone for our anchor and sink, uh, sinker. That's why they always take someone out and say, "Hey, you want to come out in the gill netter? You could be the shaker." Oh, <laughs> you're okay. You're a shaker. Well, that makes sense now. <laughs> okay. The next one is Banna. Um, does anyone know what Banna is in? Is that net? It's a type of net. Is it a, <laughs> a, a dip net? It's a dip net, yep. Banna. Um, another use for steady uh, nets were the dip net. This could be used um, to scoop salmon uh, from the creek or river. It was also used um, with other method, methods, such as bringing fish uh, trapped behind the weir. Banna, dip net. We have big nets up here, dip nets. And- um, You got big bands? We, we, yeah, we used to do it, Pete and I, but when your knees get arthritis in them, uh, uh, you're not your, because you're, when the fish hits your net, you turn it and then you pull in, you have to walk it all the way in for sure. So it's a little more hard work. You you get all your steps in though. <laughs> <laughs> but you're standing in water and that water's cold. That's why they put it where those big high waders mm -hmm. because you're actually standing with the end of the net against you and you can feel it when that fish hits your net and then you turn it and then pull in. Had to learn all this living up here. <laughs> I know. I love it. That's awesome. Still weird getting a fishing license. Okay, Tsin Luke. Does anyone know what Tsin Luke is in Gumshuamuk? Stone traps, I guess. Stone traps. Mm -hmm. So, stone traps um, or tide traps were used to catch large numbers of fauna at one time. The basic principle was to let the falling tide trap the fish behind the rock walls. Because they depend on the tide, stone traps were used uh, on the ocean, built near the mouth of the creek or river, waiting for the right time for fauna to head up the river. And, um, uh, I don't, I don't know if these are still used today. I don't think so. Um, but there's remnants of a stone trap up behind the hatchery back home. Oh, okay. I just learned. Matt, I was say, Matt, help Mike um, do this, uh, make a, a, a model of this type of trap for his steam camp through Sea Alaska Heritage. Oh, cool. So Matt was talking with Mike about how it works and so, yeah. Yeah, you might want to um, talk to Steve at the hatchery and see where that um, the remnants are. 
yeah. I want to say it's like by near Joey's Totem Pole or the gazebo. Okay. Uh, it's uh, the beach right, right below it. Okay. We'll definitely check that out. That's cool. Tim Loop Stone Traps. <clears throat> I'll start hauling rocks down to Kasilov. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to say, steal my stakes, will you? Look at my rocks. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the next one is fish. Careful, David. Uh, does anyone know what fish is in Gumshoe Mama? D Z I I S. I know that they're woven traps, but I, is there even a word for it in Gumshoe Mama? That's probably a big description. Mm, it says circular trap. The circular trap. I couldn't figure out what the root or of that would be. So get seeds. I think it's um. Uh, they're the people of this trap for sure, mm -hmm. but I don't know what the root word would be. Um. So the circular trap used in the ocean. Trap salmon as the tide falls. Also use the trap uh, ula. Does anyone know what ula is? Eel. 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 Um, the name of this one of the Simshan tribes, the uh, Gitzish, means people of the dish. Um, they're famous for using this type of trap. So a circular trap. Fish. Okay, moss. Does anyone know this is in Gumshoe Emma? It's like a big megaphone. <laughs> I don't know if it's called a basket or a funnel. Mm -hmm. Basket trap. Um, it's lowered in the river when the horn are running. And when it's filled with horn, it is lifted up and the horn are taken out. I know the, um, the Yupik um, use traps kind of like these, but the way they're woven is that it expands as the fish come in. And in the, the beginning funnel part, there's um, kind of like bone used right here so the fish can't swim back out of it. And as the basket fills up with the fish, it circulates and expands. It's really cool how it's built. There's one hanging in the Alaska Native Heritage Center, um, which is similar to uh, our moth, but uh, a little bit different. And it uses um, driftwood um, for its form. That's the moth. The next one is Ean. Does anyone know what this one is in Gumshoe Mammal? Weirs? Sorry? Weirs? Yes. Um, so these are used to stop corn from going upstream. A weir was built like a fence across the river. So the, the ux would flow through, but the horn were blocked and people could easily harvest the horn as the fish spooled behind the weir. Um, they could spear the horn or use a banna to bring them ashore. So that's that E. Okay. Go. 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 You guys ready to put what you learned to, to the test again? Okay, here comes the new code. Here's the new pin. Oh. 
Okay, three eight one four seven one four is the new pin number. I finished my kadump, so I'm wee Ben now. <laughs> Got your brain food on. Okay, I think we're all here. Used to stop pawn from going upstream, built like a fence. Teen is the triangle, teen is the diamond. 50 seconds. Teen and seven. Olga Skika is in the lead. She must have the best Wi-Fi. <laughs> when bait is dragged through the water to attract pawn. Adam pawn is the triangle. Um pawn is the diamond. Um horn M seven. A basket trap lowered in the river. Moch is the triangle. Moss is the diamond. Moss and seven. Oh, Emily's on fire. Three answer streak. Takes a great deal of skill to catch one this way. Gaishkum horn is the triangle. Sum to Amma is the diamond. Am seven Gaishkum horn. Emily's still on fire. Circular trap used in the ocean traps on as the tide falls. The so dubbin is the triangle. Zish is the diamond. I said zish instead of zish. <laughs> Togosh Giga is still in the lead, and Emily's still on fire. Method used on the beach could be used on the banks of the Spina. The at is the triangle, steady is the diamond. The at. Oh, we Ben is now on fire. Triangle. Triangle. Used to catch a large number of pawn at one time, let falling tide trap one behind the up wall. The mat is the triangle, uh, and the loop is the diamond. Then loop. And seven. Special type of net which traps horn by their gills. The net hangs in the water like a curtain. Dana is the triangle, Adam Horn is the diamond. 50 seconds. Adam Horn. Oh, Togashika is still in the lead and now on fire. Ends up in 
Another use for steady nets was this, used on its own scoop on from a creek or a river. Banna is the triangle, ban is the diamond. Banna, Anzabum. Okay, now comes the bonus question. You're gonna put them pieces in order for an umhuan in order starting with the barb. So you're gonna put them in order starting with the barb. Forty seconds. Twenty-five seconds. Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Fifteen seconds. Oh, we got fifty-fifty that time. And sub and so the order is barb, then the shank, then the laurel, then the leader. Here comes the podium. Gigi got the bronze. We Ben got the silver. Togashkika got the gold. And our runners up are should go up in Emily and Subin. <laughs> Before we go, I'm going to take a, an Ussy because I always forget to do this. So my brain's trying to do it. You know. Everybody get real close to your camera. Okay, cool. Good fall, Kali. Oh, I cut our heads off. Sorry. One more time. <laughs> Pull it back more. Ready? Cool. Good pull. Kali. Yikes. And <laughs> thank you, Mimi. Yeah. On your on your presentation, mm -hmm. the one that's called uh, Teen without the S. You know, the one there's like Teen and Teen. Mm -hmm. On your presentation, you have the S. Oh, did I? Because my mom was like, "Oh, that's an easy association." I was like, "Tian, Juan, Tian," and I was, and then we got to the question. I was like, "That's not the right one." <laughs> <laughs> I'll fix that. It seems like I always have one mistake. Oh, <laughs> just knew you. I, have, I, always have, I always have typos too. Automatic type. Why what? I exit noon. next week. What? That was really good. I, I learned stuff. Oh, good. Yeah. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. yeah. I learned stuff. Now I'm going to go down to and get a lot of rocks down there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'll it's say, try to be this, um, Shiwa. <laughs> <laughs> it's a good thing I was muted on that last one. I, I mixed up the order. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I did too. I had the, the shank. Dang, shank. <laughs> At least I was cussing at Smiley, so. Now we're, you all know how to go snagging now. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for the lesson in shame. <laughs> there is a band that we really liked in Hawaii, and I bought their CD, and one of their songs was We Be Skanking Yeah. <laughs> but they always spell it as like a Jamaican melody. S K A N K. <laughs> oh, and it always gets stuck in my head every time I listen to it in the car. <laughs> All right. Well, Dyson for playing. David, show everybody your haircut. <gasps> there he is. What's the moon? I can see your Zamu now. <laughs> I like the Utah. <laughs> oh, local Amazon.
I really like your singing. You sing the horn sound really good. <laughs> He's a uh, Dhaka Kwan every day, all day. Wow. Sometimes we'll get a good horn in there. I tried <laughs> to get him to watch Hit Hayek. Yeah. And the video that we played had the Tsatsumti song first. Yeah. And he ran in the kitchen and went, all done. All done. <laughs> I don't know what was the mask or the drum beat or I don't know what scared him. <laughs> so we'll get there eventually, I'm sure. <laughs> Whose baby do you have, Emily? Wake Invasions. Oh.